<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a very special edition of the Money Mondays. We have packed, jammed this place more than we've ever done in our history because we got Cody Sanchez and Pace Morby in the same building at the same time. And the real Tarzan's here at the same time. We had to do a quick episode. It's the gonna be, real Tarzan. It's going to be like 28 minutes and 32 seconds combined. <laughs> Normally we do 40 minute episodes because the average workout is 45 minutes. The average commute is 45 minutes. That's why we always do 40 minute episodes. But today, 28 minutes and 26 seconds is probably what we're going to do here today. So please give a warm round of applause for the real Tarzan, Pace Morby, and Cody Sanchez. Woo! <laughs> if this is on YouTube, everybody needs to make a comment about what animal you think Tarzan is. We talked about it beforehand. What <laughs> animal you think uh, Dan is. And now we haven't talked about this, but what animal do we think Cody is? Wrong answers uh, only. You know? uh, Wrong what answers only. What about you? <laughs> yeah. What about you? I don't know. That's a good question. Nobody we're gonna cares. We're going to find out. All right, guys. So the way this, these episodes work and the reason we are the number one entrepreneur podcast for 121 days in a row is Amazing. we don't do fluff we're not gonna do long bios we're not gonna do blah 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 we go straight into the money we talk about how to make money how to save money how to invest money and how to give it away to charity so let's start off with pace morby how can people out there make some money or save some money uh make some money you can immediately um man there's so many ways to make money i'm i'm actually copying a lot of what cody's doing right now i'm buying a couple of businesses in the last 90 days a business you referred me to we just bought 50 percent of yep. that was easy one day owned 50 percent of the business bought another business a couple of days ago zero down it's a construction company family says we want to move to north carolina we want to leave all of our, cl our clients behind and our pipeline is full for like seven months and they go but we don't want our brand to fall and we don't want to leave our clients high and dry we go we'll take over your business and so um, took that over and that company nets 25 grand a month. I don't have to net. put an operate net, 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 everything. 25 grand a month, zero dollars down. And the lady will stay on virtually for about six months and just help, you know, transition. And she already has the person to operate that's going to fill that spot, but they're not entrepreneurial. So we'll come in and manage the operator and we'll probably met, make after we pay that person 10 grand out of the net, we'll make about 15 grand a month right out of the gate. Cody Sanchez. What are some ways that people can make money or save money? Well, Pace stole mine. Well, but yeah, I told you. I give you credit. <laughs> I, I, still, I, answer then, right? I steal a lot of stuff from Cody. <laughs> Double step verify. I emulate her. Same. Um, how about this? Uh, right now, I'm really interested in media accelerated businesses is what I'm calling them. So I think it takes like a little bit like a 2.0 level operator to handle a big construction business. You got to be on site. There's equipment. It's a little bit scarier. But now there are all these businesses that are online that you can accelerate. Now, I like to buy them. Like I just bought 15% uh, of a company uh, called Viral Cuts. And basically, I looked at my personal P&L. So what do I spend each month and what do I make each month? And I found this one company. We we're spending so much money on video production, all of this stuff. And I'm like, I hate that. I'm cheap. I don't like to spend money. What if I owned part of that company instead and then I erase my liabilities, I turn them into an asset. So this is an internet enabled company in that they use outsourced Filipino VAs that do the video production for us. And uh, my natural content that I do every single day is videos. So at the end of any video that Viral Cuts does for me, I just put at use Viral Cuts. I never have to sell. I'm never really talking about this business. And all of a sudden the business is now doing, let's call it, you know, 107K a month after 45 days of launch. And we're going to edit that um, into a clip and they're going to do 107K a week. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So, and you don't have to accelerate it as fast as we do. Like start out with the business that you buy into, that you feed some new clients to that you make 500 bucks a week. 500 bucks a month everything we're talking about with big numbers is just scale same game different level really really smart so um somebody joked around they said rei stands for real estate investing right what she's talking about is rei is replace expenses with income wow. yep. so mm. think about this so like um if you're a real estate sure. agent already you have a job you're referring business to a local title and escrow company they will pay you marketing fees and all sorts of things back. You could go to them. This is how we, we got ownership of our first title company. This is really smart. She's so smart. Is Same. I just went to the title company. I go, instead of you guys paying me a referral fee, can I just have equity in the business and everything that I grow past your certain amount of files, I get ownership of everything else above there. And you can carve yourself out ownership in these companies pretty quickly. Love it. The Real Tarzan, you get 200 million views a month. Damn. There's a lot of influencers that get 200 views, 2,000 views, 20,000 views, 200,000 views. Very few humans can get 200 million views. Talk to the people that are out there getting 2,000 views, 10,000 views, 20,000 views. How can they make a little bit of extra money each month? Well, first of all, 
the algorithm is like a it's like the tide you know if you see if think of a fish swimming right and the tide's coming in it's going out a lot of content a lot of views mm, suppress the algorithm a lot of content a lot of views just keep going with the flow when the when the tides when the tides low don't try to post and do extra go against mm -hmm. go against the tidal wave you know when it's there let it be when it goes back up execute mm -hmm. so um, when those 200 views turn to 2000 views and those 2000 views turn to 20000 views see it monetize on it keep that quality content up and um you know in, invest in the quality content you put out you know a lot of people um, they get discouraged when they see low numbers i see low numbers all the time repost those videos when you get more traction and see how much better it does it's, Interesting. it's just like reignites your uh, your social media ego you know um when i first started i had a, a video that had like 700 views and i was like bro that's a lot but like I would see people that have like seven million or seven hundred thousand. I remember reposting it, and um, it got like seventeen thousand. I was so happy. But someone else reposted it, and it got like seven hundred thousand in twenty-four hours. I'm like, okay, what I'm doing is not wrong. So whatever you're doing out there, and you, if you feel like you're not reaching a lot of people, you're not doing anything wrong. It's just the timing of the tide. Mm. Go with the flow. Don't fight against it. Just what's, what's your favorite out. platform? Um, YouTube. I like YouTube because I'm able to express. Um, myself and also give the animals the justice they need with descriptions and their personalities and their mental stability and uh, their state of mind and how they survive and just give people real insight with short format content you're just getting the oohs and the ahs and the missed strikes and the cool like you know quick to short attention span type of things but with YouTube you know I can post a video for 20 minutes or an hour long and like whether I get 100,000 views or a million views it just feels good that people that can actually see what's being said and see the animal in its natural state or its captive state but i can basically explain everything and get it off my chest yeah because i have a lot to say but i can't say it in like 15 seconds or 30 seconds or 90 right. seconds so what tarzan's talking about about an algorithm getting suppressed or a platform suppressing is due to the fact that these are for profit platforms that we are using for free so we get mad like oh man the platform they're, they're suppressing us or they're constricting us and we're not getting as many views or not getting as many likes they are a for-profit business that we get to use for free. You have no way to spend money to pay for Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Snapchat, TikTok, Threads, etc. There's nothing for you to spend money on. So they have to make money from advertisements. How to do? How do they do that? By getting people to spend money to get more reach. Now, if you are a small content creator or a small business or small brand, once you start spending money on the platform, they want you to continue to spend money on the platform. And so what I say is it's good for it. You can do it, but make sure if you're going to spend 10 bucks a day, 20 bucks a day, 50 bucks a day, you're going to plan to do this forever because once you stop, mm. you've never seen suppression like what happens after you stop spending money with a big platform. Mm -hmm. Now, next thing. Sometimes you're going to do a post on TikTok or Facebook or Instagram or Thread, etc., and it's going to do 300 views, 500 views, etc. I'll give you a real life example. A few weeks ago, Tim Grover and I did a video about Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. Post on TikTok, I got like 600 views. Post on Facebook, 200 views post on Instagram I have 5.4 million views and growing 300,000 every few days wow. interesting now am I gonna stop posting on TikTok no because the vice versa happened there I post on Instagram a video it got 20,000 views on TikTok it has 3 million so the concept is you want to be cross-platform to build what's called omnipresence mm -hmm. you want to be popping up the way you see Pace Morby and Cody Sanchez and Tarzan you see them on a podcast they're on Instagram they're on threads they're on Facebook they're on LinkedIn they're on YouTube they're you want to be popping up what's called omnipresence because you don't know which platform is going to take off and you don't know where your viewer lives. Meaning, if Cody loves Twitter and you're only posting on Instagram, she might not see you because she loves Twitter. If Tarzan's obsessed with threads right now and you're not posting there, she's not going to see you. You want to make sure that if Pace Morby likes a platform like YouTube and you're not there, well, you're going to miss out. So make sure to build what's called omnipresence by being on all the platforms. Even if you only like one platform, repurpose that content across every other major platform. All right, next question. We're the, we got we to knock this one it. out. <laughs> Pace Morby. Someone just got into making some money, right? Mm -hmm. They had an exit. Maybe someone passed away. Maybe they got a divorce settlement. Maybe they got something from their friend's family. They had a bar mitzvah. Something happened. They got a bunch of money all of a sudden, and they don't know what to do with this 50 grand or 100 grand that they just came into. What the heck can they do when they actually have some money outside of sub two financing? Outside of stuff, I love that. So I tell people all the time when they're trying to get into investing, they should invest in somebody else's deal 
because it's not even about the ROI, right? People get stuck talking about, oh, you're going to get a 20% IRR. Who cares about the, the return? What you're going to get if you invest in somebody else's deal. If I invest in one of her funds, I'm going to watch her in action on a real live tangible deal. I'll mm -hmm. get an education that's far more valuable than any return I'll get. And then on top of it, of course, I'll get a return. So for me also, I operate, I negotiate the best deals. I get the best deals when I have no money. So when I get 50 grand from a divorce settlement, heaven forbid, I deploy that 50 grand into, some, into Cody's deal. Now I have no money. Guess what? Now I'm forced to learn. I'm forced to operate with my back against the wall. And that's where I operate the best. So I would invest in somebody else's deal, somebody else's fund. Cody Sanchez, you've built up this newsletter with hundreds of thousands of people in it. Why is it important for people to subscribe to newsletters like yours or specifically yours? Why should they be out there learning? Why is that important? I like newsletters in particular because you can go deep on a subject. You know, all the stuff that we're talking about with Instagram and TikTok, et cetera, they're surface level. It's really a retention hook. We're trying to get your attention in order to hopefully get you into our ecosystem for you to learn more. Something like a newsletter, I think, is a gateway drug to reading a book, which is a gateway drug to really deep learning on a subject matter. And so with our newsletter, you'll see it's, it's like 3,000 words. You know, these aren't short newsletters. And the reason why is because I actually believe that humans want to learn. The algorithms and a lot of the social media puts a attention restriction mm -hmm. on our attention because they want us to be watching something, buying something, watching something, buying something. They want it to move fast. And that's not what's best for you. That's what's best for the companies. So that's why you should read newsletters and you should read books and you should do long form content because that's where you learn real ideas as opposed to clickbait, surface level info. Pace Morby, you have thousands and thousands and thousands of people in your community. You throw these pop-up events and 400 people show up, 1,100 people show up, 200 people show up, 700 people show up. How do you build up this community and why is community important to you and to the community? Community is so important because the people in your community will fill in the gaps in your own business, your personality, mm -hmm. whatever deficient you, deficiency you have, somebody else has that efficiency. And so what people do is they think I have to go into business or I have to go do something on my own. And I grew up in a family of 12 children. So I, I grew up with community. And when I went into the business world and I was trying to collaborate with other business owners, they're like, what are you doing? This is competition. So I was like, man, I really need something more like a family atmosphere. So community provides that family atmosphere where like when I'm 15 and I have a job, my sister who's 16 would say, hey, do you need a ride to work? Yes. And she would ask me before I, I asked her, right? That's what community is. People noticing you, your problems, your faults, your shortcomings, and then coming with their resources to solve that problem. So that's why community is so incredibly important. Tarzan, so many people want to get famous. Tell to us about the reality of, I've watched it happen where we go to an airport or somewhere and there's 45 people trying to get a selfie with you. Talk to us about fame because Cody's getting like 30, 40 million views. I don't know the number anymore. 30, 40 million views a month. Pace has like an ungodly amount of people watching him. Like you're getting 200 million views. You just think about collectively at this table, that's hundreds and hundreds of millions of views. Talk to about the reality of fame and what people should be looking out for if they do happen to get a bit famous. You said something earlier. He was like, uh, what about 40 people call me like shake everybody's hand, give everybody a selfie. That's it. Everybody I see outside of like being in like the restroom, I shake everybody's hand, give everybody genuine attention, talk to everybody because those are our fans that made us who we are today. Mm -hmm. So when you get famous or you get this traction or all these, this big community, you have to embrace it because one day it could be gone. Mm -hmm. But if you take care of it, if you nurture it, if you water it, it's going to take care of you for a long time. So, um, with being famous, it comes with a lot of, you can call it a headache, it can be overwhelming sometimes, but look at the bright side. You could be walking around and no one knows about your business at all, or no, no one knows about your content at all, or luckily in a fortunate time in this era, people know about what we do, you know? So I feel like we really should appreciate our fans and uh, I don't even like calling my friends, I mean, the, my fans, my fans, I call them like my family you know, because uh, they help me get to where I'm at and also where I want to go. So, like, I treat them as if I would treat my family members. And uh, everybody's so respectful, and I'm always so respectful back to them. So I just love it. You know, I embrace it. And it's uh, it's one of the coolest things that ever happened to me to be able to be from, like, an animal guy and an introvert and just like an animal to now being, like, anti-social to being, like, so social. And I love it. You know, it's cool. Since you're, like, a cheetah, is he a t tiger or a cheetah? I said tiger. So if you're a tiger, do tigers have a pack? No, they're solitary creatures, apex Interesting. predators. Interesting. Yeah. Right. These people are like your pack, though. 
Yeah, yeah. They take good care of me, man. Um, I, you know, everybody has their good days and bad days, you know. So there's times where, like, I have family issues or, like, personal stuff going on or, or animal will pass away nobody knows about. And I'm, like, so down. And someone will be like, dude. Hey, or be an old lady, be like, oh my God, me and my grandson watch your stuff, you know? <laughs> and like, talk to me forever and show me like photos and stuff. And it's yeah. like, it just brings me all the way up to like a whole new level of happiness, you know? So, um, like I said, it's always someone around the corner or somewhere walking deep in the mountain or someone at the airport. You know, they're always like especially saying, at <laughs> especially at the airport, <laughs> you know, and even when I'm like, doing it, but <laughs> I'm like running late somewhere and I'm like, bro, I got to go. But like, come on. He's like, walk it's us. like, rock, it's like running us. with us the opposite way from their flight. So it's, uh, it's cool, man. It's really cool. And I love it. Pace Morby. I have never seen anybody go live on social media more than you in human history. Mm. <laughs> Why the heck do you do it? How does it work? What's happening? Talk us through it. Um, I feel like it's the fastest way to connect with people and really truly truly tell a story and what happens a lot of times I go on a podcast like this one and somebody will ask me a question in my DMs and I'm like oh my gosh I can't answer that in a one minute voice memo back to you in Instagram story or Instagram DMs so I have this weird anxiety that forces me to go answer a question my average time to answer a question is 42 minutes on a lot. <laughs> my team did the math. They're like, it takes you 42 minutes I'm like, because I like to give the context and the story and how this should blah 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 and then the next steps so I just get anxiety when I give people too short of answers. Cody Sanchez, you've heard me say this plenty of times, obviously when we did our first podcast together, you have hands down my number one favorite content on all of social media. Stop. Don't tell uh, Tanner. He's going to ask for a raise over there. <laughs> Tanner, ask for a raise. Bro. <laughs> Why do you spend so much time in the quality of the content rather than just putting out content? Like, Why is it quantity over quality? Hmm. Uh we have a saying at, in our team at Contrarian Thinking that imagine, well, we, we say turn the mundane into masterpieces. So we have a belief that what if like the person that you idolize, the person that you look up more than anybody else in the world, what if this one thing that we did is all they'll ever see from you? Mm. And wow. so we think about that a lot. And, you know, Andy Frisella, a bunch of our friends all say the how you do anything is how you do everything. And we try to live by that. It's this balance, right? Nobody's perfect 100%. But I really try to think about Every piece of content we put out, if I put this in front of like my idol, the, I don't know, Elon Musk of the business world, I would hope that it would make them think. I would hope it would like stop them for a moment. So we don't always hit that, but that's at least what we're shooting for. I feel like you hit that. Aww. Yes, you do. No, you guys are too nice. Charity. Uh, you know, we talked about three main topics here. Today we went a little bit off topics to talk about generalizations of social media, business, content, et cetera, because we're on a 28 minute and 23 second episode. I'm just guessing, by the way. <laughs> Pace, on the charity side, why is it important for people to add a charity component to their mm -hmm. personal life or to their business life? I was sitting down with a very, very famous person in Tony Robbins, and we were asking questions and having this personal three-hour time with him. And the person, I could tell you their name, and you'd be like, wow, this is a big name. They said, Tony, I no longer feel fulfilled. And Tony d dove in and said, well, you make this much money, This you've accomplished this, tell me all the things that you've done in your life. And he gets him to spill all the beans. And I watched Tony just set this guy up. And he goes, but what about mm. charity? Because mm. we once you accomplish everything financially, it's like, what's the next goal? Sure. You're not making any impact and this money becomes obsolete. Like not obsolete, but it becomes vacant and devoid of, mm. uh, of human emotion. So um, it's important for you to have a goal above and beyond money. Right. And you want to be as human beings, you want to help other human beings. Right. That's all we want to do. And when you have the baseline of I don't have enough money, that's hard to get past that. But when you get past the point of not being able to pay your bills, the number one motivating thing that keeps your whole entire family unit and your company unit and everybody excited is that they have a common goal of helping other people. So charity is critical, crucial. So I've passionately integrated charity into my whole world for the last decade, right? I was throwing charity events in the past, but really the last decade in particular, like I'm obsessed for a couple of reasons. One, the actual charity of itself. I want to do the actual thing. And I like very simple charities that are not trying to cure cancer, or cure AIDS. Cause I think they've been cured for many, many years. That's a different rabbit hole. And I can't raise billions of dollars to actually go cure the thing if they weren't cured. And I think they've been cured. So I wanted things like making backpacks for the homeless model citizen fund. We put 150 items inside of a backpack. Half food and drinks, half cleaning supplies, a watch, a poncho, sleeping bag, just things that people would need for homeless. And we give out millions and millions and millions of items through Model Citizen Fund. It's a 0% charity. I pay for everything. So it's a very clean cut thing. And then we did Train This Kids Foundation. We have a back to school day where all the kids, there's about 400 Latin families come to Hubble Studio in downtown LA. 
and then we give them back to school supplies. We have report card day where they can get prizes based on their, their grades and the report card to incentivize them to work hard. Thanksgiving food drive. That one's obvious. And then the toy drive. Last year, we broke the Guinness Book World Records for the largest toy drive in history. Nine years ago, there was eight of us on the floor wrapping toys. Eight years ago, there was 12 of us, then 20 of us. And we built a community of now there's, I don't even have to show up. There's hundreds of volunteers. I like to show up, but I don't have to be there. Of hundreds of volunteers that are there wrapping toys and giving these things out. And now last year, we covered the field with 164,000 toys. That was fun to watch. And then we did Salt Lake City. And this year is our 10-year anniversary. So we're going to try to do 10 cities in a two-week period if we can. And so far, we've already locked into 10 cities. So hopefully, we can execute on it, which I think we will. Why do I do it? I want people to replicate the charity in their own version. Do they like the, the food drive? They don't have to do our food drive. Do your own food drive. You like the toy drive? You can give out toys in Chicago or New Mexico or Austin, Texas. You don't have to come to L.A. or Salt Lake. Oh, you like backpacks for the homeless? Fantastic. You don't need my backpacks. You can make Ziploc bags with homeless supply items with your kids and your friends and your grandparents. You can go do that. So everything is kind of caveman style. I want to show people how charity can work and how they can replicate it. And the last part was during COVID was the tipping, the $1,000 tipping club. And we did a $100 tipping club where you'd go to a restaurant and you and nine friends would pitch in a hundred bucks each. And then you surprise the waiter or the waitress with 900 bucks. That started to escalate to 15 people, then 20 people, then 30 people, 40 people. Way more important than that is now there are tipping clubs happening all over, all over the place. And I don't even get tagged half the time. They don't know that me and Jimmy Rex and these guys started it. Mm. I don't somebody, care. Somebody asked me to go to one a couple of weeks ago. I go, oh, cool. Is Dan doing one? They go, who's, who's Dan? Dan? Exactly. <laughs> I was exactly. like, he's the guy that started it. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. The butterfly effect yes, of that is so massive. Cool. The inspiration. They did one in Salt Lake recently. And it was a food truck, and they gave the guy thirty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, oh, Keaton, Keaton, and the boys. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. That's life-changing, life-changing. That guy just had a kid too. So I say that all because the concept for me and why you guys hear me talk about charity all the time is because we grew up in this culture where they're like, "Oh, you shouldn't post about charity because then it's not really charity." Mm. I post about charity, so you guys all do it. Agreed. Mm-hmm. Agreed. And I'm gonna keep doing it for the rest of my life. I'm gonna keep talking about it. I don't need a pat on the back. I don't need a cute DM. I want you to go do charity over mm-hmm. and over and over and tell your friends to do it too. Tarzan, we obviously know what types of charities you like. Tell us about why you're so behind animal charities. Well, one of my favorite charities um, is actually cleaning up the beach, mm. uh, doing beach cleanups, uh, recycling plastic. Um, me and my buddy started a, uh, it's called um, Center for the Sea. And we would go to like to hit up the mayor and be like, hey, Biscayne Bay behind the heat stadium is just loaded with trash. We're going to clean it up. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you do. You're not going to stop us. And he's like, that's not how you do it, but we're going to give you a permit to go. to. Yeah. That's so we, uh, we, we rally the troops, same thing you do, like go on Instagram, hey, meet us here. This day gave a week notice, posted a couple stories about it. Worldstar posted it. And, uh, and before you know, we had 500 people picking up like 15,000 pounds of trash. Holy on the ocean, moly. Wow. You know, and we're like, now we don't even know where to put it at. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know what to do. You know, we're now putting in storage units and like trying to figure out how to like, properly recycle it. But it started the same thing. It started a trend. Someone else did it on uh, in New York. Someone did it in Santa Monica. Mm. And it's like so dope to see people like go around and start like, hey, picking up trash is cool now. And you know, people go to the beach and like after like Labor Day or Memorial Day and there's a couple of people like posting like, hey, clean up your trash after the beach. And like, you know, they're tagging us. And it's so dope to be able to just spread something cool like wildfire. And uh, something simple like, hey, I'm going to go get up on a Saturday morning at 6 a.m. and go pick up some straws and save sea turtles or pick up yes. some plastic bags so sea turtles don't eat a thick inner jellyfish or so on and so forth, you know. So it's really cool. It's one thing I love to do. Um, you know, and there's tons of other animal charities you can work with, like helping dogs get spayed and neutered so they don't eat natural animals in their natural habitats or like uh, – saving rhinos you know or doing uh blood grafts of giraffes and helping arthritis foot hoofs and stuff like it's just you can go all around and have anti-poaching and pulling snares out to jungle so it's uh, a lot of stuff i like to do but beach clean is one of my favorite things so normally i don't know when the episode comes out but this one is coming out this monday august 7th so you guys are listening it's monday hi (laughs) hi welcome to money mondays (laughs) On Wednesday, coming up, Wednesday, August 9th, I'm going to make the biggest announcement in my entire career. Oh, I know about this. Oh, I know, too. We yeah. were on the plane together. So Can I, can I make the announcement? Just kidding. <laughs> it's, your, it's your announcement to make. So I'm not going to announce it yet. 
but it is an event space and you guys are going to see mm -hmm. the press release come out on Wednesday. I'm going to go meet with the 85 employees to scale in the events category. But I say that because part of the biggest event I've ever done in my life is September 23rd, Salt Lake City. Both of you are going to be there. Boom. Yeah, we will. So it's I wanted to, I call it practice. This is my practice one. I mm -hmm. feel like if I get this one right, September 23rd at the Maverick Center, I'm going to replicate this. I want to do it two, three, four times a year across the country. Obviously in your city, in Arizona. I want to do it in Texas. I want to do it in New York, Miami, etc. You guys get bombarded with events. There's an ungodly amount of events that are out there to go to. I speak at over 100 plus events a year. You guys speak at a zillions of events a year. Like There's so many events to go to. This one, I'm practicing to throw a one-day version of 10X Effect. I love you know. the one-day version. Me too. It's like, what are we doing here? Three days. <laughs> 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 like, I, I learned enough in day one. I want to go take action. Yes. Right? I love it. So for this one-day conference, it's called the Limitless Arena. Uh, we're going to have David Goggins, Gary Vaynerchuk, Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, Tim Grover. There's 25 speakers, so I can't go through all of them. A lot of them are on panels because obviously we can't actually fit 25 people into a one-day conference. But you're going to get to hear from some of the legends all combined into one category. And everyone that sees the flyer like, isn't that a four-day conference or a three-day conference? No. It's a one-day conference. We have Russell Brunson. who's going to be amazing. Uh, Gary Vee, then Ed Milet, then Russell Brunson, then Lunch, then Cody, then Pace. Back to back to back, 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 back. I got all, I got the entire like schedule in my head because it's going to be running like a military. So if you guys are out there and you want to come to the limitlessarena.com, we are in Salt Lake City, September 23rd for a one-day conference. We're going to raise a bunch of money for charity that day. We're going to have a surprise performance that night. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows yet. Keep that in mind. Uh, but if you guys want to join us there in Salt Lake City or send your entrepreneurial friends, come out there to see us. When you guys get bombarded with events, how do you choose, based on your busy schedules, which events you will or will not speak at? Pace and then Cody. Um, Pace goes, yes. I used to say yes. I say no to probably 70% of stuff now. Wow. And um, now that we've got a baby boy coming in December, I, said, I started saying no for an eight-month period. I won't speak for eight uh -huh. months, which would be fun. I didn't do that with my, my last daughter, and I regret it. So mm. um, I say no. The things I say yes to, if they're my friends, I'll immediately say yes. Mm -hmm. No questions asked. If you're my friend and we've collaborated, the answer is always yes. Whatever you want, I'll do whatever you want. If I don't know you, what I do is I look at your audience and I also see the types of comments that are being made on your socials. If you have positive go-giving type of people in your atmosphere, then I want to hang out with those people. Mm -hmm. But if it's like people that are like the Lamborghini people and all the things and the pinky rings, anybody got a pinky ring? On? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you've got those types of that atmosphere, I'm, it's just not my vibe. Sure. And so I'll say no to it. And then um, also when people ask me to speak for three days, I have an event in September. They're like, we need you to speak all three days. I'm like, oh bro, God. that ain't happening. Right. Mm -hmm. I need to come right. in. I want to hang out with all your people in the hallway for five or six hours and yep. then I got a dip. For sure. Mm -hmm. So um, I also, the weirdest thing, the weirdest reason I say yes is because if I have real estate in that space, I go, excuse. I'm going out right. there, I'm going to see my space, my stuff, I'll film content, et cetera. Right. Mm. Cody, how do you decide? I, I usually say no <laughs> to everything. But that's because right now, I was thinking last night, I, I looked at one of my journals, I was saying this on the podcast from back in the day, and I have massive FOMO. I want to say yes to everything, and I'm not very good. So if I, I'm either zero or 60. I'm either yes, 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 I'll do it all, or I can't say yes to anything. Right. And so um, my husband and I are focused on, we want to build a family this next year. And so I'm really trying to narrow down anything that that doesn't lend itself to that. And I looked back at this journal from uh, when I first was building my first company and I wrote this line, which is like, you are not boring, you are building. Mm. And I went and looked back at that and was like, you know what, that's exactly what we're doing right now. So I'm the same way. I will say yes to my very close friends, like people that I actually would do deals together. Like you guys, if you guys ever needed something, I'd be like, I'll be there. Um, but for most people, it's a, uh, it's a, um, yes to the event being awesome in our friendship but like no to actually doing the event and i truly believe like you just you cannot be everything to everybody and it's so hard for people like all of us because our mission and our businesses right. are serving for sure. people yep. and so you will fall into a dark hole trying to serve everyone and serve no one if you do it that way and i joke with with pace about saying yes to so many because I was joking that he was the Energizer Bunny this morning. You are too, actually. And I don't know what you well enough, but I'm, I might be the same. And But I think, you know, for me, just knowing that you're, it's okay. You're the yeah. type of human, I got to recharge. I have to think about stuff. I got to write those newsletters. I'm just not built the same. I'm feeling okay with that. 
the last thing we're going to give you guys some quick advice in case you're considering being a paid speaker because there's a lot of people that are out there that are considering going out there and speaking some for vanity some for ego some for money here's the levels level one zero dollars when you first go out speaking whether you're a dj musician or a speaker you're going to probably have to go out for free because you either don't have a big following nobody knows who you are not sure if you're good on stage etc and you're going to want to get your reps in just going out there and speak you can also host your own small event invite 10 people 20 people 50 people to a local hotel or local art gallery or car studio etc like a car gallery and just host a small event just so you can practice being on stage holding a microphone getting comfortable the number one fear in our entire globe is public speaking hmm. mm -hmm. the number two is actually him with these snakes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people are actually more scared of a 16 foot anaconda like do you really think about that so how do you get past that go out there and speak at events or host your own small events or get your friends together and host small little masterminds for free with five ten of your friends in your local area next level you're gonna start to charge two grand to five grand okay 2k to 5k is what a lot of people are getting paid to speak and some of you are like, oh yeah that person's getting 25 grand they're not they're getting 2k to 5k for most events because most events don't have the money to pay Cody Sanchez and Pace Morby and the real tires and they can't afford 25k 50k 100k type speaking fees the next level is where a lot of people live it's 5k to 10k this is pretty much the normal rate that any event can actually afford before you start to get into talent, meaning someone with a following or a name or some actual paid expert. So 5K to 10K is what most people will get once they've had their reps. Someone wants to get them to bring an audience with them or they, they're like a niche in real estate or they're a niche in animals or they're a niche doctor type influencer. Those people are going to get 5K to 10K. When you start to get to the 20K, 25K, these are professional paid speakers. You're charging, you should be with an agency at some point at that rate. You're charging 20K to 25K, you can make serious money. Like, serious money. Because think about it, if you do one, two, three events a month at 25K, that's more than a doctor, that's more than a lawyer, that's more than most anybody. Because you can make mid six figures a year net, and you're not shipping anything. You're just talking for 30 minutes to an hour. When you guys start to have these like visions of grandeur of like, I'm going to make zillions of dollars, that's 50K to 100K. To get 50K to 100K, you got to be Ed Milet, Andy Frisella, Tim Grover. You know, household names are getting that 75K, 100K, 50K type rates, mostly closer to 100K when you get to those names that I just mentioned. Anything above that, that's above 100,000 is a celebrity. This is a person that's going to be household name, Mark Wahlberg, Kevin Hart, household name, musicians, rappers, artists, Tony Robbins, etc. Gary Vee. These are people that are getting a quarter of a million dollars, $300,000, $400,000, etc. I say this because I want you to understand if you're going to go out there and become a paid speaker, you have to get really, 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 really good at what you do. And if you get really good at a specific topic, people will hire you. If someone is very, very niche and they teach about how to sleep better, you're going to get booked all the time. You teach how to lose weight or you teach how to get buff or you teach how to do real estate or how to buy businesses. People are going to want to pay you and they're going to start to lean towards that 10K, 20K, 25K type rates because you are a niche person that they know is going to provide value to their audience. Now, if you can couple that where you're a niche and you teach something about buying businesses or real estate or animals, etc., and you start to get a bit of fame, well, now you get to 25K to 50K, etc. The point is, there is money in paid speaking, but first, before you go do that, get really, really good at your topic, start to throw events, get really good at speaking on stages, build your social media profile, etc., before you go out there and try to charge people or get a bit sad or frustrated if people aren't offering to pay you, go out there and do those things for free. I still speak at my my friends' events for free. There's people that I don't know or acquaintances. I charge 25k to 50k. If I have to travel more than cross country, I charge 100k because I don't want to go. But if they're gonna pay me 100k, okay, I'll go. Right. For the most part, most of my rates are 25k to 50k. I'm assuming you guys are in the similar range of 25k to 50k. But for people that are out there, I'm still speaking for free for my friends. I will always speak for my friends for free. I don't care if I become a gazillionaire, or a bazillionaire, or I become super famous or get 200 million views. I'm still going to speak for my <laughs> friends for free because I don't do that part for the money. I do it for what Cody mentioned. I want the service. I want people to learn about the niche that I'm talking about the same way that Pace and Cody, etc. want people to learn about the niche that they're talking about. Any final things before we wrap up? I spoke so long for free that I didn't know you could charge. <laughs> and then I got a TV, sh uh, the TV show we got with A&E, we've got six seasons with them. We're currently getting ready to film season three. A&E put in my contract that I have to charge $50,000 and my face appears on a screen, on a stage and I'm like, who's gonna pay 50 grand? I've been doing this for free. 
And then last year I made half a million dollars in speaking fees. Right. Like all of a sudden, boom. Net. And, um, but I don't charge my friends. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'll even, even if, it, if you're my friend, I'm paying for my flight and my hotel. Yep. Same. If you're my friend, Same. you have you have a course. I I pay for her Me newsletter. So it's like sh- it's so freaking good. Like the second I become your friend, I'm buying your course. Yep. And you got buddies that are like, oh, I'll give you my thing for free. No, I don't want anything from you for free. Same. If I'm a good friend, I'm paying for it. Same thing if I'm speaking for you. I'm paying my own way. I'll bring my I'll br- even bring my team with me. I'll promote. I'll do whatever it is. But it is amazing how long you have to go for free and really build a name in order to get to that 50,000 mark. So yep. people, you got to know, you got to do put in the reps for two, three years. Right. Just like DJs, just like musicians, just like, just anybody like actors, else, yeah. et cetera. Any last words? No, I don't think so. I think you guys have nailed it. Go to contrarianthinking.com. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Didn't even pay him for that one. Make sure. Right. <laughs> Follow at Pace Morby, at Cody Sanchez, at The Real Tarzan. Now we have one request at the end of each episode. Make sure to have these discussions about money with your friends, family, and followers. We all grew up thinking it's rude to talk about money. And we here at the Money Mondays think it's rude to not talk about money. So make sure, go to the moneymondays.com, share with your friends, talk about the podcast, talk about money. Just explain to them why they should be investing. Talk, have these discussions about rent and utilities and overhead and salaries and like learn about what these guys are teaching about how to buy businesses and sub two financing to buy things without having actual capital. Like you have access to information that's mostly free or very affordable to learn about how to make your life better, make your friends, family lives better. We will see you guys next Monday at moneymondays.com. Boom. <laughs>